While there's no justification for Putin's war on Ukraine, it does not follow that there's no explanation for the invasion. John Mearsheimer writes that the trouble over Ukraine actually started at NATO's Bucharest summit in 2008 when George W. Bush administration pushed the alliance to announce that Ukraine and Georgia will become members. Even with this 2008 announcement, though, most analysts acknowledge that there was unlikely that either country would ever be admitted to NATO because of opposition from France and Germany. Nevertheless, the U.S., including the Biden administration, insisted on beating the drums to admit Ukraine to NATO. Just last fall, you signed the U.S.-Ukraine Charter on Strategic Partnership, which renewed a commitment to the 2008 Bucharest Declaration supporting Ukrainian admission to NATO. Knowing full well that Ukraine was unlikely to ever join NATO since it had already been 14 years since they were said they were going to become members, why was it so important last fall, before this invasion, to continue agitating for Ukraine's admission to NATO? Thank you, Senator. Um, not a question of agitating for uh, Ukraine's admission. It's a question of standing up for the basic principle that we strongly adhere to, that uh, there should be uh, and will be an open-door policy when it comes to NATO membership. These are sovereign decisions for European countries to make and, of course, a decision for the NATO alliance to make uh, in terms of making sure that a country that wishes to join uh, actually adds uh, value to NATO. But this goes to the, the heart of uh, the international system and the international order. And part of that um, is uh, a basic principle that one country can't dictate to another the choices it makes about with whom it allies. Uh, it's foreign policies. Uh, it's um, it, it's uh, decision or not uh, to try to engage with the European Union, uh, with NATO. Uh, the other thing and I yet, see, as we speak and we see the destruction in Ukraine, we also hear pronouncements from President Zelensky saying, well, you know what, maybe we might consider neutrality as a possibility. There could have been voices before this invasion, instead of agitating for something that we knew our adversary absolutely hated and said was a red line as uh, recently as last September, before you signed the agreement, once again agitating for NATO, Russia said that it was a red line. Now, there is no justification for the invasion. I'm not saying that. But there are reasons for the invasion, and I think it's added nothing. In fact, had Ukraine been in NATO, as you've advocated for and many others have advocated for, we would now have troops in Ukraine. We may still have the destruction, but we would also have troops in Ukraine. If you were to put them in now, if it's still your policy that you want them in now, we would, that means American troops go. The one good thing about them not being in is the most bellicose of our members here are not advocating for U.S. troops right now. That's a good thing. We have not had advocacy for U.S. troops because they're not part of NATO. Had they been or are they to become part of NATO, that means U.S. soldiers will be fighting in Ukraine, and that's something I very much oppose. Senator, could I just say to that, because, it's an, look, these, these are important uh, conversations and arguments. My judgment is different. Uh, if you look at the countries that Russia has attacked uh, over the last years, Georgia, uh, leaving forces in Transnistria and Moldova, and then repeatedly Ukraine, these were countries that were not part of NATO. Uh, it has not attacked NATO countries uh, for probably you a very could, good reason. You could also argue the countries they've attacked were part of Russia. Well, that... Uh, or I, were part of the Soviet Union. Yes, and I, fir I firmly disagree with, uh, with, with that proposition. It is the fundamental right of these countries to decide their own future and their own destiny. And I'm not here's, saying here's, it's not, here's but I'm saying that the countries that have been attacked, Georgia and Ukraine, were part of the Soviet Union. And, that does were, not and they Russia were part the of right the Soviet them. Union since the 1920s. But that does not... <laughs> That does not give Russia the right to attack them. On the no contrary, no one's saying it does. They were, but it they were really liberated has nothing to from do. being part of this uh, empire by force. Let me just say this, because I do think it's important. If you look at why President Putin went to went into Ukraine this time, we took very seriously the arguments that some Russians were putting forward back last fall that they had concerns about Ukraine's eventual membership in NATO in terms of their security posture, Russia's security posture. What would this mean in terms of the placement of uh, forces near Russia, weapon systems, et cetera? We sought to engage them on those issues in real uh, seriousness, as well as engage them on deep concerns we have about many of the things we do that undermine our security. But when everything uh, came to a head, it is abundantly clear in President Putin's own words that this was never about Ukraine being potentially part of NATO. And it was always about his belief that Ukraine does not deserve to be a sovereign, independent country, that it must be reassumed uh, 
into Russia in one form or another. And yet, and that is not and yet the discussions we can let go with and Putin. yet the discussions between Zelensky and the Russians have included discussions of them uh, assuming an unaligned or neutral posture. So this, that has been part of the discussion. And this is a sovereign decision for, for Ukraine to make. Yeah, but at the same time, we're all over the place, you know, thinking we're coming to the rescue. And then maybe sometimes we're not. Maybe sometimes we're agitating for something like admission to NATO that makes it worse. Maybe Ukraine has a, more of an ability to make this decision if they're not being pushed and goaded by half the members of the Senate who want them in NATO. So you know, perhaps it is perhaps it is not useful to be pushing them into NATO, and perhaps they will come to an agreement. But the other thing to remember about war is war very rarely uh, ends in complete victory by either, either side. Um, I, I'm proud of how well the Ukrainians have fought. I'm supportive of their cause. But I would say it's very unlikely they're going to now invade, take over Russia and depose Putin. I think the most likely and the best outcome would be some sort of stalemate, perhaps pushing them completely out of Ukraine. But even pushing out of Ukraine is still a great step from where we are now. So there may well be a negotiated peace. Would the U.S., would President Biden be open to accepting Ukraine as an unaligned, neutral nation? We, Senator, are not going to be more Ukrainian than the Ukrainians. These are decisions for them to make. Our purpose is to make sure that they have uh, within uh, their hands the ability to repel the Russian aggression and, indeed, to strengthen their hand at an eventual negotiating table. We've seen no sign to date that President Putin is serious about meaningful negotiations. If he is uh, and if the Ukrainians uh, engage, we'll support that. 